Hi and welcome to the Ericsson 2018 OSSBSS User Group in New York. I'm Des Blanchfield and I have the pleasure of being joined by Anoop Agrawal. Hi Anoop, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so much for uh, making time to catch up with me on camera. So uh, we're in uh, sunny old New York, although not so sunny yesterday. Uh, and we've got a couple of exciting days ahead of us with this whole user group event. And, yep. uh, and, and thank you very much for hosting it and congratulations on a great outcome. I uh, really want to focus on a couple of key things that I know that are in your world, uh, particularly the, the whole orchestration and the, the, I guess the software defined DevOps piece. Um, some of the things around control, uh, you know, the controls, the policies, the, the governance of that space. Uh, and, and certainly with your background and pedigree, this is an area I think you're deep on. Uh, but before we do that, just the next couple of days, for you personally, what are the two or three key things that you're looking for from you know, some of the presentations, the keynotes, or key takeaways? Well, what are the highlights for you in the next couple of days coming up? Sure. So, uh, so I just learned that you know this event has 61 unique operators and about 261. 61. Wow. And, and about 250 participants from all over the world. I, I think this is the biggest e event uh, where people have come together. And I think, uh, you know, uh, my VP uh, in her opening speech talked about how carriers need to work together mm -hmm. and uh, how how customers shouldn't be worried about you know connectivity across continents, etc. It should be all oblivious to them. And I think I think that's what this should be about. I and mean, this is about right. you know operators coming together and working uh, to a much bigger pie than it used to be. Well, this is a key point. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, you know, it is the underpinning, I guess, foundational con you know, component here. And that is that you know, this is such a big emerging market, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not just the 5G component, uh, and particularly enterprise. Mm -hmm. and, and it's such a global thing. Yeah. You know, when we look at sort of the 54 nations in, in Africa for roughly 1.1 billion people, mm -hmm. you know, India's got nearly 1.13, uh, mm -hmm. China's got 1.3 billion, that's yeah. 3.8 billion people, yeah. mostly who are unbanked and not connected to the internet or, right. or a phone. Right. Uh, and the complexity and speed that we've got to move at, I think your point uh, absolutely underpins all of this, that yeah. the carriers are going to have to work together. That's right. Um, Keen to look at what Verizon and, and Ericsson are doing there in particular with regard to the context of this event. Um, the, the orchestration piece, the, the business support systems, uh, I mean, the, the speed at which the market's demanding things from you, particularly in the enterprise space, mm -hmm. and the speed at which you've got to instantiate and create products. Mm -hmm. um, what insights can you share around your part of the world, um, inside Verizon in particular, on how you're leveraging some of the OSSBSS tools that are available from Ericsson and how that relationship's worked and, and what can we expect uh, certainly to come up? Sure, so, uh, you know, a real-time experience and instant provisioning and and a network that's always up is almost uh, taken for granted. Right. And, and if it is not, then uh, you know uh, it is not a good thing. I mean, we look, yep. we lose a lot of credibility in the market immediately. And one of the key things or key capabilities that we have uh, in our network is our orchestration and automation. Okay. Uh, and Ericsson is a huge part of that. Uh, so we we have what we have implemented about two years back, and we continue to evolve uh, evolve that uh, uh, application and and the whole idea is around uh, really creating virtual networks, mm -hmm. uh, but then also working through a hybrid in a hybrid world. Right. So you have legacy network and the new networks. Really, the new OSS and the new uh, BSS have to cater to that. You're mm -hmm. not going to. Uh, everything is not going to be virtual day one, yep. um, and maybe never. Who knows? But uh, but we really have to be able to uh, make the network invisible uh, mm -hmm. to the to the users or, or to a customer. And um, orchestration plays a huge role in it. But then orchestration also plays a role in the for the future. Mm -hmm. What's happening is with the distributed uh, computing, with edge computing, uh, with public cloud and private cloud working together in tandem. Uh, you again need uh, orchestration to really be able to orchestrate uh, right. Uh, loads or workloads across all of these clouds. But then what about scale? Right? I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about RAM densification, we're talking about uh, massive IoT deployments. That, so orchestration also has to take care of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So an orchestration not in isolation of just automation, but inventory and uh, you know configuration management, all of yep, that yep. Uh, combined. So that's, that's, that's what we're striving for. It's almost like software is eating the world. There's a, a famous quote around that with uh, Mark yeah. Andreessen, right? Um, in all of that, the thing that really strikes me, and I, and I know this is in your world as well, uh, you know, the whole governance control component inside mm -hmm. the organization and outside with the state and, mm -hmm. and federal government controls, um, policy controls, the security aspects, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the difference between a BYO device and, mm -hmm. a, and, a, and a device that's issued from your employer, mm -hmm. uh, the handoff between networks and operators and carriers. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a really big challenge, right? Yeah, I guess this comes back to where the BSS and, and OSS platforms right. are probably the, the, the lifeblood of it and, and almost, 
it almost seems to me the scale and speed that we're looking at now, it's impossible to do it by hand. Uh, Absolutely. That, that we're, uh, we're only going to be able to do it at the scale and speed and, and cost, cost effectiveness, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, how, what does it even look like when you start a conversation around when, when one of the when one of your enterprise clients comes to you and says, well, "How are we even going to take the first step? Where do we go? What does that even look like when you start talking about some of these? Do you, do you just break it down into constituent elements, or do you try and swallow the whole ocean? I mean, I'm really keen to get the insights on kind of what people watching and, and listening in should be thinking about. Where do I start? How do I get this conversation? Yeah, I, going? I think most of our customers are coming us are coming to us expecting that we have answers to their automation. I'm uh, sure they are, and, and they are already coming to us and asking for a real-time experience it's it's not even okay can I take baby steps towards it that's for us to take for them right uh, especially in the managed area so uh, so we are having to provide those answers real time to them mm -hmm. on how we actually differentiate ourselves in the market by providing you know virtual services mm -hmm. which actually allow for the speed that you're talking about so it's, uh, yeah it's just an expectation that's already set it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's, it, to me, it's like there's a transition from where organizations, particularly in enterprise, might have had stuff behind their firewall or mm. third-party hosting, or now yeah. they might be adopting a hybrid sort of you know bimodal, private, public cloud. Yeah. Uh, but it seems to me that the organizations, from what you're saying, and certainly from what we're hearing in the last mm -hmm. uh, few presentations this morning, is that organizations are realizing now they should really stick to their core business and not try and be a telco, exactly. not be a service provider exactly themselves. Right. Is that what you're seeing in the market? People coming to you saying, okay, we've worked it out now. And we expect you to have solved it, as you said. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you know, what's what's the maturity of that space like? I mean, are people just coming saying we expect you to have it all done? What does it look like? Can we have yeah. it in blue? Or do they understand that it's not all done yet, but they yeah. do expect you to solve it for them? It, it, it's a mix. Uh, and what we see is they definitely expect us to bring us the automation, and right. Uh, but they also want more control uh, okay. of their own destiny. So they also want us to provide orchestration as a service, for example, right, where their engineers can change it, change yeah. things yeah. on the fly, configure the network to their uh, yeah. needs, etc. So, so it's a, it's an expectation of both being real time as well as having more control. So it's gotcha. a pretty interesting mix. I did see an interesting blog the other day uh, from one of your team, and the phrase was sort of uh, Taz uh, Telco as a service or Carry as a service, yeah. and and I think we've seen that in enterprise and other things, you know, whether whether it's. Uh, shadow IT that drove it, or whether it's just uh, cost effectiveness. To mm -hmm. me, it seems to be time to market, speed, yeah. and as you said, Absolutely. cost effectiveness, that speed and time to market. And resiliency, while we're doing all of that. Yeah, well, in fact, we were talking with this uh, someone about this earlier on, and that is, you know, this whole five nines components moving yeah. from infrastructure to, to the cloud platform, the yeah. software, now it's moving all the way up to the stack. I imagine that, that you know, policy controls and governance and security exactly. and all that stuff, not just in your network, but also in the enterprise networks now, are, are, not just a nicety, but it's a requirement, right? Yeah, I mean, think about what we have uh, done to the network, right? Yeah. I mean, in, 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 in making it more agile, we have actually turned it into a software-defined network. But what that also means is that I've separated the infrastructure from the application, from the OS, yeah. right? and uh, now suddenly, instead of having a box which, I, which could fail, and I know it failed, or uh, I now have three or four components mm, to mm. manage. Plus, I have different clouds. I have hundreds of clouds to manage, which are both private and public, or could be at the customer edge. Now, without really having a powerful uh, assurance uh, system, which is supported by ML and AI, I really cannot uh, even handle it, even if I have unlimited money to do it. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it's, uh, it's, uh, it goes with the evolution of the network now, that I have to uh, tie it very closely with closed loop assurance. I like that. Yeah. Um, one last thing I'd really love to get some insights on, it's probably a big question for you. Uh, the next 12 to 18 months, is, I think there's going to be a lot of state level and uh, federal level interest in the speed that things are being built and mm -hmm. run. You know, I think a lot of organizations have had to deal with this in the bricks and mortar space. You know, build a data center, they get a router and switch in a server and had to capture metadata, and particularly you know, not so much from the terrorism point of view, but just mm -hmm. general governance and, mm -hmm. and, and even using and building mm -hmm. attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, there must be some really big challenges that you were thinking about of how to scale this now because you're thinking about multiple carrier, co-compete, co-opt, mm -hmm. you're talking about uh, uh, multiple platforms. Yeah. Any insights you can share around what that's going to look like uh, or even crystal ball gazing? How do we handle that sort of global rollout that you've got large enterprise clients that are multinational, they're in various regions, various countries and they are right. expecting you to just solve that one bubble fits all for them. Right. Right. I think the key word is interoperability. Right? Okay. And interoperability operability comes with standardization, right? If, yes. uh, if it's not not just the carriers, but so the vendors, and everybody has to follow common standards, and that's when we can really bring the promise that you just talked about. And without that, uh, you know, we will just actually eat away 
um, at each other uh, through competition, which mm -hmm. may, uh, when it's, it's a lose-lose uh, proposition. Yep. But with standardization, it can become a total win-win. I did get the sense from one of the uh, early uh, presentations this morning uh, around this Lego block building thing, and that is that once upon a time, competitors would try and tear each other down. Mm -hmm. Now you're almost trying to build each other up because exactly. when you're, you know, it's kind of like that uh, know thy enemy sort of thing, and my enemy is my friend. Uh, as you build each other up, your joint capability for this massive market uh, yeah. is going to just increase, and then everybody right. wins in the stack, right? That's right. Well, look, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me on camera. I really enjoyed getting to know what uh, you're up to and what uh, is happening in the uh, Verizon world and uh, particularly what you're doing with the Ericsson Partnership because I think this is a massive enabler for many uh, organizations, but certainly yourselves. And uh, look forward to what's uh, going to happen in the next 12 to 18 months uh, in what you're doing in your role yeah. and, and the team from uh, Verizon and the partnership with Ericsson. Yeah, we're all very really excited to see that too. Fantastic. Well, thank you so thank much you. again. And uh, folks, we'll wrap up with that. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Des Blanchfield. We're here in New York at the uh, Ericsson 2018 OSS BSS User Group. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next video.